Hey, my name is Emmanuel. I'm from Colombia, but grew up in Regina, and I now live in Calgary. I like going for walks in nature while listening to music. Dutch Blitz is my absolute favorite game, and I love eating pizza. I grew up in a loving family, and I dreamed of raising a family of my own one day. But ever since I was a kid, I remember feeling attracted to the same gender. So I wasn't sure what my future held. I got bullied a lot, and I was called gay, fag, girl, feminine, and queer. And I started to ask myself, am I gay? The bullying and earlier abuse I'd faced led me to attempt suicide when I was 12 years old. When I was in grade six, I started watching pornography, and by grade eight, I was going on chat rooms. At first, I thought it was cool to talk to people all around the world in privacy. And when I noticed I was mostly getting attention from older men, I realized this was something I craved. For years, I fought against these feelings, but eventually I came out to my friends, family, and at school. I thought I'd lose everyone, but everyone actually loved me more during this time. They cared for me more than ever. Even so, I was still figuring out a lot of things. Around the time I was 16, going to gay bars and in a relationship with an older man, I went to see a few different counselors. Some affirmed all of my actions, while others challenged me to explore my relationships and to question how I was living them out. My Christian faith was and is a big part of my life, so I also looked for counseling and support in that context. I found a diversity of approaches there, different kinds of churches saying different kinds of things. After looking around a bit, I found a counselor at one church who became a real mentor to me. The first session didn't focus on sexuality, but gradually he counseled me respectfully in ways that I personally wanted him to challenge my behavior. My parents didn't know I was going to see him, but he helped me out a lot. If professionals don't feel free to have conversations with people that might challenge their behavior, their identity, or their assumptions, then I wouldn't have been able to get the counseling I needed from my mentor who I freely sought out. As a 16 year old, I knew what I wanted for myself. Without the Christian counseling that I chose completely on my own, I literally don't think I'd be here today. That might not be your story, but that's my story. I believe that people should be able to get the support they want. Attempting to protect people by limiting the kinds of support we can get from counselors, friends, and even our own family members actually gives us less freedom. I want to be clear, I am firmly against any conversion therapy, which means coercing people into degrading attempts to change aspects of their identity. Honestly, I'd be the first to support that law. But I also want to make sure that anyone genuinely asking questions about their sexual identity will be able to legally get the support they choose. Friends, family, and mentors giving me advice about sexual behavior is not conversion therapy, and I don't want to see a chill put on these conversations. Right now, the Canadian Parliament is considering a bill on conversion therapy that uses a very broad definition. That's why I'm speaking out about the need to fix the definition of conversion therapy so that freely chosen counseling, casual conversations, and parenting are not criminalized. Thank you for listening to my story. Please support people like me.